I'm Tabitha, and Jane has been my best friend since childhood. We grew up in the same apartment complex and spent endless hours playing indoors, inventing our own games and having a blast. But not all of my childhood memories were happy ones. Sometimes the other kids in the complex often teased me about it, calling me names like, gorilla, and making fun of my appearance. At first, I tried to ignore their taunts and pretend that it didn't bother me. But deep down, their words hurt me. I just wanted to be like everyone else and not stand out so much. I wished I could make my body hair disappear or that I could be invisible. But Jane, so far never saw me as different. To her, I was just her best friend, and that was all that mattered. Whenever the other kids picked on me, Jane was always there to defend me and tell them off. One day as I continued playing with Jane, I couldn't shake off her comment from my mind. It was the first time someone had ever shown genuine curiosity about my arm hair. I had always assumed that people found it weird or unattractive. As we played, I noticed Jane studying my arms from time to time, her eyes darting from my hair to my face and back again. At one point, I looked down and noticed that my hair had become spiky due to static electricity. I felt self-conscious and embarrassed, hoping that Jane hadn't noticed. But to my surprise, Jane actually seemed fascinated by the hair. She reached out to touch it gently, and I flinched at her touch. Sorry, she said, pulling back her hand. I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. It's just that I've never seen anything like it before. I shrugged, not sure what to say. I was used to people either ignoring my hair or making fun of it, but Jane's reaction was different. It made me feel both uncomfortable and grateful at the same time. For the rest of the day, we continued playing, but I couldn't help but wonder what Jane was thinking. Did she still see me as her best friend? or did she now think of me as the girl with hairy arms? I pushed those thoughts aside, telling myself that it didn't matter what anyone thought of me. As long as Jane was still by my side, I knew I would be okay. One day, Dad had received news of a job transfer that would take us away from our beloved town. My heart sank. It meant leaving everything I knew and loved behind, including Jane. But as fate would have it, I overheard my parents talking one day and learned that our departure would only be temporary. We were coming back in a few years, and suddenly my sadness turned into relief. It was as if a weight had been lifted off my shoulders, knowing that I wouldn't be saying goodbye to Jane forever. Still, our final day together before the move was bittersweet. We spent it playing our favorite games and reminiscing about all the memories we had shared. When the time came to say goodbye, we both tried to hold back our tears promising to stay in touch and to see each other again soon. Fast forward 10 years, and my family was finally moving back to our old town. As the plane touched down, my heart was pounding with excitement and nerves. I couldn't wait to see Jane again, to catch up on all the years we had missed, and to relive some of the fondest memories of my childhood. When we arrived at our old apartment building, we were greeted by a crowd of familiar faces. But among them, I saw a tall figure standing off to the side, watching us with an intensity that I couldn't quite place. It took me a moment to recognize her, but then it hit me, it was Jane. She had grown so much taller than I remembered, and her facial features had changed in ways that I hadn't expected. But as soon as I saw her, all of my nerves melted away and I was flooded with joy. It was like we had never been apart. We ran towards each other expecting each of us to hug and cry but Jane was reluctant to hug me. Something had changed. She had grown taller and meaner. But I let it go and went home. When Jane came to my doorstep the next day, I could sense that something was off. She seemed different, not just because of her towering height, but also because she had started to wear long sleeves and a hoodie all the time, even in the summer heat. I couldn't help but wonder why. As we talked, I couldn't help but notice that her voice had deepened and she now sounded like a girl much older than her actual age. But I didn't mention anything about it, not wanting to upset her. As we talked about old times, Jane looked at my arms, which had become even hairier since we last saw each other. She remarked that she remembered the days when the other kids used to tease me about my hairy arms. It was then that Jane surprised me by rolling up her sleeves revealing her arms that were now covered in thick, curly hair. It was like nothing I had ever seen before. Her arm hair was darker, thicker, and several times hairier than mine. I couldn't help but stare, completely shocked by the sight. 
Who knew puberty would take a huge hit on me? Jane said with a laugh. I stood there speechless, still trying to process the fact that my best friend had transformed into a super hairy girl. I was amazed by her transformation, and I couldn't help but feel relieved that I wasn't the only one with hairy arms anymore. I then hesitantly reached out and ran my fingers over the thick hair on Jane's arms, feeling its rough texture and marveling at how it seemed to take any shape I put it into. As I pulled my hand away, I couldn't help but notice the hair on her legs, which were several times hairier than her arms. Looking closer, I noticed that her eyebrows were also thick and bushy, giving her a distinct look that was unlike anything I had ever seen before. As I took in her new appearance, I couldn't help but feel a mixture of awe and unease. Jane had developed into a hairy, scary girl, and while part of me was fascinated by her transformation, another part of me was scared by how different she had become. As I continued to stare at Jane, trying to make sense of her transformation, she broke the silence. I know I look different, she said, her voice softer than before. But it's not just my appearance that's changed. I looked up at her, curious. What do you mean? Jane hesitated for a moment, then began to explain how she had struggled with her body image after I left. She had always felt self-conscious about her hairiness, but as she entered puberty, it became more pronounced and she felt like an outcast among her peers. She had tried to shave and wax, but it only made her feel worse. Eventually, she decided to embrace her hairiness and stop trying to hide it. As time passed, I noticed that Jane was becoming increasingly pronounced in her body hair, voice, and height. It was as if she was going through a second puberty, but this time, it was even more extreme. Her hair was thicker and darker than ever before, and her voice had taken on a husky quality that was deeper than her dad's. And she was towering over me, her height now well above six feet. I started to become increasingly worried about Jane's well-being. I didn't know if what was happening to her was normal or if there was something wrong. I tried to ask her about it, but she would always brush it off, saying that it was just part of growing up. But I knew that it wasn't normal for a girl to change so drastically, so quickly. As I watched Jane, I felt a mixture of emotions. Part of me was happy that she had found a way to feel comfortable in her own skin but another part of me was still scared and uncertain about what her future held. I knew that our friendship would never be the same, but I also knew that I needed to accept her for who she was and continue to support her, no matter what. With that in mind, I took a deep breath and started walking towards my own future, knowing that I had learned an important lesson about acceptance and love.